what is going on? This is our uh, debut uh, episode. You know, we, we've started to do our short little mini episodes, but yeah, this is our debut uh, Sixers focused uh, show on it's a uh, drunk on the court. So we'll be uh, we'll be recording this. Uh, you're going to find this. Uh, if you're finding this, you're finding it on one of our podcast feeds or on our YouTube channel. Um, so, you know, you know, we're we're looking forward to kind of dropping these episodes, uh, you know, every once in a while, kind of kind of whenever we feel like it. Um, Pretty you know, much, it just so happens that you Pretty know much. today's, uh, you know, it's a it's a beautiful Saturday, uh, kind of cold and brisk, uh, but very windy, you know, very windy. But you know, we're perfect day to be indoors drinking a reindeer games IPA. Hashtag clown shoes. What's up, fellas? <laughs> if you want to sponsor us, contact <laughs> us. On social media, or we'll pass anyway. you and you can say no. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, listen, Rich. You know, we, we've got our you know the the team is just coming back. They're going to play at home tonight against the Timberwolves. Uh, they're coming back off a six game West Coast trip. Yep. Uh, you know they they were you know they started off you know in Indiana, and kind of made their way west, playing you know Utah, Denver, Portland, Sacramento, and then uh, Golden State. Yeah, you know, they're come they're coming back. You know, two wins, four losses. Um, it's hard to kind of get a read on where this team is presently. Um, I think the thing to take away from what we've seen so far uh, is you know what what I have kind of started to, to call the bench mafia. Yeah, the, you know the 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 carryover in the starting lineup has been the guy that has been the most impressive out of anybody that I've seen play in the, on this team, which is Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. I mean, he's been nothing short of brilliant. I, I, I like the kid coming out of Kentucky. Um, right. He came from Kentucky, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, just making sure. Always get that. Yeah. In Kansas. Not here. Kansas. Always going to mix up. I like the kid coming out of Kentucky. Uh, the kid's a gamer. He's got a great head on his shoulders. Um, and I could tell he would be that, I, I thought he would be more of a combo guard, but I love him running point for this team. I love the fact that he has the Seth Curry's the past two, who Seth's been nothing short of extravagant to when he's been out there. Right. Again, we're plagued by COVID, and it absolutely sucks. Our record is not indicative of who we are as a team. Our identity hasn't been there all season, mainly because we haven't had our full team. We're still dealing with the issues of um, Ben Simmons and everything that he's put this organization through, his teammates through. But Tyrese Maxey, all credit to the guy. He's been playing out of his mind. He looks competent. He looks – everybody trusts him on the court, which I think is a big thing, um, having trust in such a young point guard to be able to come in and fill that role, especially when he wasn't in that role last year. He was more of like a, a second thought, second fiddle type of guy, especially in the starting lineup when they would start Danny Green, they would start Seth, and yeah. Maxie was a guy who came off the bench. Um, he's been nothing short of great. Him in the minivan. Uh, right. Like, uh, they, I really like how this team's been built. I like how the team's playing. It just sucks that they can't get in a rhythm, especially coming back from their six games on the road, the West Coast trip. You ran into – Dame Lillard, who was going to just drop 37 on you. You ran into Golden State on Wednesday night. You know, Seth, hey, Seth, Seth and Steph were identical in points, but it looks like Seth was a little more efficient. So take that. We have the better Curry brother. Yeah. I mean, listen, you know, Rich, the thing that I love about Maxi right now is that he's not scared. Like you see him, you know, dribble drive and pull up from the court, you know, from that, that, that extended elbow. Um, you've got opportunities for him to get on and score. Um, drive the him his ability to be able to beat his guy off the dribble and get to the hole. He's yep. not scared to go to the foul line. Those things are things that we did not see out of Ben Simmons. You saw an aggressive drive, but then here's what I love, Rich. What I'm not seeing is the drive jump up in the middle of the the lane. And try to awkwardly throw the ball out to the the perimeter. Yeah, you, you, you're you're seeing the the spacing of having a Curry and a Tobias on the floor where they they're both comfortable shooting from three. Yeah, Corkmas has been impressive. Yes, um, in, in the minutes that he's had, even you know, 
at some point. I know he ran the point for the Turkish national team um, <laughs> for the Olympic for the Olympics. <laughs> for the Olympics, they were so, desperate. But, they were desperate. They, they they were desperate. I think, but when he's been in that role, he's been serviceable. Yes, right? he's not. He's not. He's not dribbling around anybody, but he's he's getting the job done when they need him to fill that position. Yeah. Um, you know, the I think, and this might be a little conspiracy theory here, Rich, um, but I Ooh. think this COVID forcing us to really find out what you have in terms of bench pieces could be something that could be an asset in that stretch run when – at the end of the, the year, you don't necessarily have to find out what you have on the bench, that you know what you have, and that will allow Daryl Morey to really make a very strategic move to add a piece to this team because he already knows what he has in those guys. He knows what he's getting from Niang and Korkmaz and – you know, and guys like Isaiah Joe, Andre Drummond has been impressive. He had a game the other night where he had 26 rebounds. I know that was nice. um so and, and that that piece, that guy is only going to be continue continue to be more of an asset uh when Embiid comes back and you know we'll talk about that in a minute with Embiid scheduled to return tonight uh, against the Timberwolves. Yeah. Um and even Rich, you're even getting contributions from guys that are like you know, 13, 14 on the bench. Like you're getting contributions from Charles Bassey. Yeah, like I know. guys, you know, that to me, that, that it just, it, it had my conspiracy theory kind of working out that like, yeah, this could turn around and be a positive because even though you're struggling, you know, the, the, there were a couple games on this West Coast trip, like that, that you're losing by 20 plus points. Yeah. Um, but, Kind of expected with the lineup that you're putting out there. I mean, it's not like my like you said, it's not the, all the conspiracy, the conspiracy theory behind it. But I, as I said earlier, it's not indicative to what this team is because they're not at full strength. But you like what you're getting from these guys who, like you said, 13th, 14th guy off the bench. You like what you're seeing out of the B-ball Pauls, the yeah. Isaiahs, the Bassies, the Cork Mazes, Drummond's playing very well it's just these guys you're not going to be able to count on for full-time minutes which we understand or the amount of minutes that they're getting right now especially when we get tobias fully back we get joel fully back but it might take joel might play tonight but play limited minutes and it might take him a while to get back up because his conditioning but you see drummond playing 20 plus minutes he's, he's been viable he's been a right. viable guy for the offense it's just getting everybody back to that congruent clicking stage. And right. I think that's going to come within time. I don't think that I'm looking at this team. Oh, I'm worried they're not. I think this team is going to be a playoff team. Um, I think they're going to have better stretches and better runs once they are fully healthy, can keep these guys fully healthy, and we get out of this COVID stuff with this team. I mean, it's it's yeah. good us, and it's been tough, but you like what you're seeing on the court. You're expected to be down 20 points or to lose 20 points to – Steph Curry, who's playing out of his mind to another MVP. Like, this is the stuff that you expect, but they're still battling. They still have heart. They're still not giving up. And I believe you add one or two other bench pieces to this. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you trade Ben. You can get a, another center. I, I like, as much as people are saying, don't trade him to Sacramento if it's not De'Aaron Fox or Buddy Heald, or I think Buddy Heald's already gone. If it's not De'Aaron Fox, I do like Bagley. They're not using Bagley. Do I think it's yeah. just completely? no, but I think you can get Bagley another piece and maybe a first round pick. And I'm completely fine. I'm just over the whole Ben Simmons thing at this point. And yeah. when Joe comes back, this team is going to be a lot better because it's Joe. It's Joe. He's, he's the heart and soul of this team and Maxie's only getting better. So it's going to work out for the Sixers better in the long run. I mean, con considering the, some of the games on the West coast trip, even though they lost that, the, the Golden State game by 20 plus points, right? You know, the, they were competitive through the beginning of the fourth quarter. You yeah. know, they hit a, they just hit a stretch in the fourth quarter where they got outscored 30 to 12 and the, and the, and the score just flips and you get a couple of possessions and it, and with a team like Golden State, it takes them three possessions and yeah. they turn it, you know, they turn a six point lead into a 16 point lead with, within 90 seconds and, 
when that happens with nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter, you're done. Yeah. Um, but for them to be able to go into to Denver and be able to get a win in Denver shorthanded when Denver, you know, all, all Denver is really missing is Jamal Murray. Um, I thought that that to me was the probably one of the more impressive games. Um, you know, the, the Kings game, you know, I mean, they essentially went and beat a fully healthy Kings team with without the five without five of the guys that they thought that they would start the the season with. Yeah. Um, so I think to me, I, I, I look at, you know, I think what you said was important in terms of MB getting um, that you know, maybe he comes back in, you know, in limited minutes to start and then he's able to get uh, as he gets healthy, you progressively, you know, take some of those minutes away from Andre Drummond, take some of those minutes away from Bassey and you get to be able to look at, you know, really, implementing that MVP candidate into the offense. And I mean, he's where he, that this whole team revolves around him. Exactly. So, um, but I like that, you know, you did have a five game, you know, a five game losing streak, uh, but then they're following it up with, with alternating wins. Yeah. And and I think the more you're going to see games, you know, they've got a couple winnable games, uh, coming up with the, they're playing Minnesota and Orlando, um, and then you know in the start of December they've got you know they're they're at Boston at Atlanta at Charlotte twice so they've got you know those two home games and then they've got a you know another four game road trip uh, at the beginning of December. Th- this could but they're all wi- those are all winnable games yeah. right Boston is not lighting the world on fire nope. um, Atlanta is kind of right where they were last year, maybe a little bit behind where they were. Um, and both games in Charlotte are really winnable games. Yeah. So um, I, I just, I love what I saw um, from, from the bench, from Maxi, from, from the, the, the guys that are really elevating their game to kind of fill the role that they were kind of thrust into. Um who, who's a guy, Rich, that you're looking at in this next when 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 they're fully healthy? Who's who's the guy coming off the bench that you think is going to be the biggest contributor once this all shakes out? The guy I want to come off the bench to be the biggest contributor who's been very disappointing this season is Danny Green. Um, I need to see more from Danny Green. I get it. His defense isn't there anymore. He's not that elite defender that he once was. I mean, we've seen that in the previous seasons with him. But he's got to start knocking down shots. I need to see at least at least ten to twelve points a game from him. Okay. I can't I can't keep seeing him put up goose eggs because he's going to keep losing minutes. And at this point, I'm more comfortable with uh, Quirkmas being out there because Quirkmas looks a little more competent at that position, especially being like one of the first guys to come off the bench. And Quirkmas isn't afraid to shoot. He'll keep shooting until he's blue in the face. I like the confidence. I like the fact that he doesn't back down. Um, I think him not being afraid, especially of a contested shot, driving to the basket, his handling has gotten a little bit better. Uh, he's not exactly the turnover machine that he once was. He still right. needs to be better. But if Danny Green keeps shooting as poorly as he's been, it's going to be Cork Moss. Cork Moss is going to be the guy that I'm going to rely on for about 13 plus a game. Who's going to come in. He's going to get you that streaky three jump shots in a row. He's going to be that guy that can put you on a run or it can be a run ender, especially when you put out the twos. So I'm going to say it's a coin flip between Cork and Danny green. I want to see Danny green step it up, but I am very comfortable with watching Cork take his minutes. So if you slide Danny green into that six man role, yeah. Is Cork the guy you slide into the starting role? <sighs> I don't want to see him start. I don't want, I like Quirk Maz being the guy off the bench. I think Danny Green is going to start by default. Okay. Or you kind of slide in just for defensive purposes. You can slide Matisse into that role and give him those opening three to four minutes and then boom, switch out, put Danny Green, boom, switch out, put Quirk Maz. You kind of transition it that way. Um, just because I do like the heart and the intensity that 
Matisse plays with. But again, he's not lighting up the he's not lighting up the shooting. I thought he was going to come out and be a lot no. better shooting this year. But that, I'm, that I'm, is the God. That, that, no, that, I mean that's the one thing that kind of that surprised me a little bit. He, I thought he was going to be a little more well prepared and, and advanced yeah. is shooting this year, which he he hasn't been doing. I mean um, his his play on the defensive end, especially there were a couple plays in the uh, in the Portland game where he kind of, where he was able to check Lillard. Um, he, you know, he's kind of perfected that block from behind, you know, letting the guy yeah. pass, getting a jump shot and be able to block from behind. Um, his, his ability to be able to read the pass, especially at like the top of the key, you know, and create those fast break opportunities. Yeah. Um, I, he's got the D part down, right? But he, if, if he can elevate and evolve, if there can be an evolution of his game, right? What? Yeah. If he can get that outside, if he can be a threat from the outside, then that automatically makes his dribble drive all that much more dangerous. Exactly. Um, and I, I really wish that that got better. The fact that Rich that he's only you know he's averaging like six and a half points a game. Yeah, it's tough. Isn't isn't going to get it done? Um, you know, but you know he is. You know he is getting like almost three steals a game, right? So. You take the good yeah. with the bad and, and the points that he's creating off the turnovers, which I'm completely content and happy with. Right. But I just I want him to be a three and D guy. I don't want him just to be a D guy. As much as I love it, it's we need we need that foundation in our starting lineup from that position, whether it be Danny Green, Matisse, or Corkmas. If you wrap them all up in the one player, they would be Clay Thompson. <laughs> right. but, yeah. you, but you break yeah. them but you break them apart you have what you have that is one of my worries with the sixers just between right. those three because they're all streaky one can play elite defense one plays no defense one is decent two can shoot lights out from three one shooting under from three one can go off for 30 and then have a goose egg one can just put up constant goose eggs that's the position that I'm worrying about the most. If you want to call it the combo guard two, whatever they really want to call it, that's the position because I mean, you still have Seth there, Seth and Maxi. Right. So I guess, I guess you want to call it the three because Tobias is essentially your four, but Tobias right. is playing everybody's <laughs> roles are different. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to judge just off role, like legit position wise on the court. But the three, my three areas of concern are exactly what you said, and that's Cork, uh, Matisse, Corkmas, and then Green. Just by the, I just wanted so much more from Matisse this season, and I'm just, yeah. I'm just not. I, I love the defense. I've never had a problem with that. But you got to bring, you got to give me some offense. You have the, to, because it's going to yeah, be hard I'm, finding you minutes. It's going to be hard when we need a basket and you're in. Like it's yeah. hard. And that that's where like in the playoffs, like he, he becomes instead of being a guy that you can count on in, in the, the final minutes of a quarter to kind of lock down somebody, you you feel hesitant to be able to put him in that role yeah. because you know the only way that that works is that if you call timeout right after that defensive possession so that you can swap him out for somebody else. Yeah. If he can get that scoring that even if it's rich, even if honestly, if it's a mid range game, yeah. Right. Just something that there is a threat that he can score from the outside consistently makes all the difference in the world. Um, I agree. But a guy, honestly, rich that I'm disappointed in is Tobias Harris. That goes without saying. I mean, I, listen, we, you, you and I, have we, we've kind of touched base with Big T Will about Tobias Harris, and he, he has coined the phrase that he's he's allergic to – Mr. Allergic to 30. Yeah, um, he really is. He, it, it, it's amazing the fact that even in the position that he's been in, in the roles that he's been in, where he has the opportunity to be the guy, he still kind of defaults to other people. He's reluctant, and I don't know why, because he has yeah. all the talent in the world, and that he's just not a killer. He's just no. as big as as Big T will. Shout out to the Full Court Press, Philly Full Court Press. If you're not listening and following, you're doing yourself a disservice. Fuck Spike Eskin. I said it right here. Um, I'll say it again at the end as we welcome you to Pettyville. But it comes down to 
he's not a killer. He's a guy that you love having on your team for leadership and just being an overall good person. But that guy, if you handed him a knife and said, carve this turkey, I'm pretty sure he'd pass the knife to somebody else because he just, he's not a killer. And yeah. the turkey's already dead and just, we just want to eat. Like it's, it's one of those, it's one of those things where you want to see this. And he is successful at getting his baseline of 23 points. But my God, would I like to see this guy put up a 40 burger, maybe even 35 twice in a season. When Ben Simmons had it exactly the same amount as 30 point games as you last right. year, there's a problem. Yeah, I think yeah, I think he's in a position where he's like the he's good as like a third wheel, right? Yeah. He would he would be the perfect player that if this team could add a guy like Lillard, like Bradley Beal, that would be the perfect position for him to be in because he wouldn't have to be that thirty point a night scorer. He could, he right? could get away with giving you twenty. He, he right. could get away with that. But in the role that he's in, where essentially he is the second, the second best player on this team. And he's being paid like the second best player on the team. Um, you're not going to be able to get away with being able to do what he's doing, averaging like 20 and a half points and eight and a yeah. half rebounds. It, it comes down to the fact that we know we need another piece. Um, it's all where the chips fall and where they lie with Ben Simmons. It's, it's, it sucks talking about it, but it's hindering so much with this team. Yeah. I, I don't blame the Sixers organization for giving them that contract. But at the same time, if you're going to be that little asshole and sit out because you don't want to be here after you just got paid, you should have never assigned. And I'm a firm believer in that. I don't think that we can progress as a team without getting rid of him. Even if we have to trade him for assets that we are going to use to trade for another guy, I'm completely content with that. Just getting something done in the near future, I'm all about playing playing the long game um, and screwing him because apparently he's he's broke and that's why he's having these mental issues and he might return to the team because $17 million mansions in California are tough to pay for when you don't have a check coming in. I, I don't I don't get that because I'm not a millionaire, I, I under but I understand the, the financial hardships. But when it comes down to being a professional athlete and obligation to your team, fulfill it. Tobias and the Sixers need another option. He can't be the he can't be the second option on this team, even though he's paid like one. But welcome to the market that he was in and what the Sixers needed. I really wish we still had Jimmy Butler, um, but I'm not going back that far. I, I, at this point, we move on. But what we need is to find something that we can do to make a package work to get rid of two five to bring pieces in that maybe we can trade to another team that will need them along with other draft picks. And see what we can get and go from there. But I'm super optimistic without without that. I still think when Joel comes back, he gets you that 25, 30 points mm-hmm. a night. And the bench can go back to being the bench and just work on defense or work on scoring. We're fine. I mean, you're asking guys to play in roles that they're not used to and they're not comfortable with, but they're still playing well. I have no worries about this team going forward. I don't think Ben's hindering us that much once Joel and the whole team is healthy. But it'd just be nice to get something done and just to move on with our lives and not be caught up in the soap opera and just root for our Sixers because right. they're still playing great basketball. It's you know just, what's crazy? Rich, what's I, I, I almost forgot at one point that he was even that, that he was even on the team. Agree. And, and to me, that was that was a great thing. I was like, holy crap! Like I got so enthralled with this Maxie. team and Maxi and what they were doing and and the guys that are coming off the bench and those guys that are being productive. That like I realized that we hadn't talked about it in forever, and I was like, it, awesome. it, it, "It was awesome." Um, to go back to your your forty burger from Tobias. Fun fact, Rich: How many times has Tobias Harris scored forty points? Zero. Zero. He has Zero. never. He has never scored forty points. He's allergic to that. He's allergic to well, that. And to speak to, to Big T Will's point, his career, how many times has Tobias Harris scored 30 or more points in his career? Four. Thir- 31. 31 times? He has, he has 31 times scored 20, has scored 30 or more points. In his career, 
Damian Lillard does that in, in half the season. <laughs> in, right. Oh, right. makes me laugh. So, um, you know, I, I think he's he's got to be better. Um, but I think you're going to see uh, the more that MB comes back, the more that we're going to see those roles shift and be able to get uh, get our our kind of our, our mojo back. I think you, you've got a couple of games coming up that you could kind of start to put a couple wins together and be plays a little bit more, um, you know, anything else you want to add Rich before we, before we swing out of here? Uh, no, I think I'm good. I mean, I think we, the one thing I love about our new look shows, I love giving out these, these bonus episodes. I love the time. It's just fun. I hope you guys all enjoy this. Um, Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. We are going to be doing live um, drunk on court after the Eagle season. We're going to be – you still get Don's drunk on ice. We're going to be doing drunk on the fight. And so there's going to be so much for us to put out there. And we're giving it to you in a, the perfect amount of a lot of time. So follow us, listen, and go Sixers, baby. Go Sixers. Check out those highlight packages. Check them out.